Would it surprise you to know that working at height is one of the top cited incidents year over year? Well, it's true. Working at an elevated height brings a ton of new safety concerns that you wouldn't have down on the ground. This is why OSHA will have points of emphasis programs around fall protection. In this episode of the OSHA Inspection Series, we're covering, you guessed it, fall protection. Welcome back to the Lifting and Rigging channel, my name is Kay. Today we'll be covering the use of required fall protection, how to stay OSHA compliant with your fall protection, mandatory training, and inspection documentation. We sat down with Kevin Muldoon. Kevin has built his career around keeping workers safe at elevated heights. So let's hear what he has to say. So many people when they talk about OSHA and they're talking about fall protection, don't really know that OSHA generally classifies fall protection into two areas, construction and general industry. Construction is 1926 and uh, general industry is 1910. And the height requirement is different. In construction, it's six feet. In general industry, it's four feet. OSHA does a very good job of comprehensively looking at hazard identification, uh, talking about how you can identify the hazard and how you're going to control it. When you're talking about a height hazard, you're talking about either eliminating it or controlling it. And a lot of times you cannot eliminate it. So you use the hierarchy of fall protection, which is a series of controls to control the height hazard. Now there's lifelines, vertical, horizontal, there's guardrails, there's fall restraint, there's fall arrest, there's all of these. And you really have to select the best one. Right? So OSHA looks at it and says, okay, what are you doing to keep your people safe? Do you have a competent person? Are they on site? Do you have a qualified person? Do you have an engineer? They're looking to see what activities that you are involved in to keep people safe. And you're doing that through a series of, of these controls. And you also will be looking at your JSA to see whether the job site analysis, which is what JSA stands for, and that you're following it. Because they're looking to be compliant. OSHA does a very good job of putting in areas where you really need to look at your JSA and say, oh, so that's why I have to do that. That's why I have to do this, right? So it's really a vehicle for your uh, employees or your team to be able to communicate with one another and communicate everybody knows what we're doing to be safe. Before you actually begin work at height, you have to plan the job and you have to use a JSA and you also have to have a rescue plan because that rescue plan is something that you may need. And if you don't have one and you're simply calling 911, then you better know the distance that the rescue team is going to travel for you to, to get a response. It's very important for you to know that before work begins and it's at height, you have to plan. OSHA had a final rule that basically mandated that employees be trained. OSHA 1910.30. The employer must train each employee in at least the following topics. The nature of fall hazards in the work area and how to recognize them. The procedures to be followed to minimize those hazards. The correct procedures for installing, inspecting, operating, maintaining, and disassembling the personal fall protection system that the employee uses. The correct use of personal fall protection systems and equipment, including, but not limited to, proper hookup, anchoring, and tie-off techniques, and methods of equipment inspection and storage, as specified by the manufacturer. At Mozilla, we have three types of classes that can train you to be OSHA compliant, and that is the basic fall protection course, the intermediate, and advanced, which the advanced is a CPT or a competent person training class. Recently, we have visited a lot of our customers and they have lifelines already installed and some of them are not compliant at all because their team put them up and they put them up 20 years ago and they just think they're they're fine but they have no documentation on how to inspect 
So how are they going to do that? Oftentimes what we do is we take that old system down, we put up a new pre-engineered system that has all the inspection criteria whatsoever, and then every year we come in and inspect it. And, and it passes, and it passes because they put it in in the first place. Inspections are very important, and Mazella knows this. So we have forms within our company, there are Mazella forms, that actually show the manufacturer, the date it was uh, installed, how many people were on it, the manufacturer model number, all of the information uh, pertaining to that particular uh, piece of equipment that you have in your facility. It's not something that we, you know, we do and then we hand it to you and then we send you an invoice. If you have any questions about it, we show you the form up front and we say, here's what we're talking about, right? Is there a nameplate? Does the nameplate actually uh, say the, the model and, and what the guys are attaching to? Because before they do that, they need to see that it was inspected and it was inspected annually. And then in some cases, if it's the manufacturer spec, it's before each use or every six months. Whatever it is, it's compliant. So if you really even had an OSHA audit and they came in and they said, hey, can you tell us the last time that this was inspected? We can produce that document for you, show you the date and when it was done. And so that's the sense of knowing that that equipment is safe when your workers are doing their job and they're tied to it. We have a team that works together. We have a structural engineer, we have a sales rep, that actually is an expert in lifting and in safety. And you have a product manager like me that actually that's all I do is height safety. That's my job. And so we come on your job site or in your plant and we talk to you about what you're doing and what your employees are doing at height. And just talk about their range of motion, you know, whether a platform would be better or whether uh, the existing equipment that you have is just doing fine, we just need to inspect it. And you really give you a baseline of comfort that you know that the equipment that you have on your job site or in your plant is OSHA compliant and it meets all safety codes for OSHA and ANSI. Are you looking for more information on fall protection? Check out our case study on Palm Harbor Homes and how we were able to help them get their fall protection up to OSHA standards. Plus, you can head over to our OSHA inspection series playlist to watch all of the other episodes. Those video links are down in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment if you have any questions or just want to say hi. Once again, my name is Kay, and I'll see you later.